Let's talk about sunscreen. Dermatologists say that every person should be wearing at least 30 SPF of sunscreen every single day. But did you know that the type of sunscreen that you pick could affect our marine life, oceans, and overall ecosystem? Certain sunscreens have some really bad chemicals in them. Any sunscreen that has the following chemicals could cause harm to animals, sea life in our oceans, the water we live in, all the way to the very air that we breathe. These chemicals are causing specifically horrendous effects on our coral reefs that can lead to bleaching, DNA damage, producing really sad baby corals, and even killing the coral reefs. So how does this even happen? And how does the sunscreen chemicals even get there? Well, when you go into the ocean, more than half of the sunscreen that you're wearing comes off into the ocean, and even if it doesn't, when you shower after going in the ocean, the rest of it comes off then. Between 6,000 and 14,000 tons of sunscreen end up in coral reefs every single year. 80% of the corals in the Caribbean have lost their color over the last 50 years. So how can you prevent this from happening? Well, you have to look at the ingredients in your sunscreen and make sure that none of them have any of those bad chemicals in it, and instead look for sunscreens that have zinc oxide or titanium oxide, which are both okay and will biodegrade safely into the water. Certain sunscreens will claim that they're reef friendly, but they really aren't. So you really have to read the ingredients list before you buy your sunscreen. Basically what you're looking for is non-nanoparticles and non-oxybenzone. And this link posts a list of good sunscreens to use every single year. Here are some other eco-friendly sunscreens that I've tried that you can try too. But why exactly is our coral reefs deteriorating even a problem? Well, I will tell you. Coral reefs are a huge part of our ecosystem. 25% of the ocean species rely on coral reefs in their daily life. These species use healthy coral reefs for means of shelter, food, and even reproduction. And if these safe enclosed spaces are not healthy and unavailable for use, that means fish reproduction is going down and fewer eggs even hatch when they're exposed to these harsh chemicals. So say goodbye to all of that seafood that you love to eat. Coral reefs also have a really strong relationship with green algae. Green algae uses photosynthesis to clean the oceans and provide oxygen that we breathe. Without a healthy coral reef nearby, green algae is unable to grow and their photosynthesis is inhibited. So say goodbye to breathing. Coral reefs also protect coastlines from eroding during storms and other natural disasters. In addition, without clean coral reefs, Mussels, sea urchins, all types of fish, and even dolphins could be harmed due to the effects in the changing ecosystem around them and the polluted water from the lack of green algae. Another problem with the lack of green algae cleaning our oceans is that our oceans start to smell. Mark Eakin, who is a National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administrator, says that when you get out of the water, you smell of death. This is from the lack of green algae cleaning all of the water and the scent of rotting corals all over you. Now, it's also important to keep in mind that the sunscreen you're picking isn't the only thing that's damaging our coral reefs and our ecosystem. Climate change and pollution also has a huge effect in these places. With the rising temperatures of water and the overall pollutants in the water, a lot of coral reefs are being damaged because of this. However, it's important to think about the things that you can do to stop climate change and stop these pollutants from entering our ecosystem. So what's the best solution? Well, looking for a non-nano and non-oxybenzone sunscreen that also comes in an eco-friendly packaging that won't add to plastic pollution. Now I teamed up with my friend Sam Torres, who is a fellow zero waster who made her own sunscreen. Hi, I'm Sam, and I've been living a zero waste lifestyle for just over a year. If I can support local and buy local, I will um, if it comes to zero waste things. But if I can't, I have to find alternatives, and that's when I started making my own products. Something that I really struggled to find though was sunscreen. Everything that I looked at online was packaged in plastic or it was super expensive and you barely got any. So I knew that that was going to be something that I would have to make on my own. I used to spend a lot of money on sunscreen and sun care products because I'm very pale and 
very sensitive to the sun. Not only was I spending a lot of money on sunscreen, but I was producing a lot of trash into landfills because sunscreen bottles, most of them cannot be recycled. So I'm here in my kitchen today and I'm gonna show you how I make my own zero waste sunscreen. I make a mineral-based oil sunscreen because oil is a natural reflectant of UV rays. Now to start off with making the sunscreen, you're gonna need a bowl for mixing and a container for storing. Next, you're gonna need your sunscreen base. I use shea butter and cocoa butter because they're both extremely moisturizing and great for your skin. I also use vitamin E oil for the same reason. Next, I use cooking oils for their natural SPF qualities. Coconut oil finishes off the base of this sunscreen. Then I use essential oils for fragrance. Finally, I'm gonna use zinc oxide, which is the main ingredient in the sunscreen and provides the most SPF. Most of my ingredients I've been able to find at Whole Foods or Bushes, but the zinc oxide I did have to order online and it came in zero waste packaging. To start out, I've combined two tablespoons of coconut oil, shea butter, and cocoa butter into a bowl, as well as one tablespoon of my cooking oils into a separate bowl. The vitamin E oil is also mixed in with my cooking oils. Then I'm going to combine the base of the sunscreen together into a large glass bowl, making sure to get all of the oil into the bowl. Then you can choose to either melt it down with a double boiler or just put it in the microwave. The microwave tends to be a little faster. Make sure to stir it until all of the oils and butters have been combined thoroughly. Once that's combined, you can add your essential oils. Today, I'm using eucalyptus and peppermint. The cocoa butter already gives it a strong smell, so you don't have to use much. Just a few drops of each should work. Next, go ahead and mix that up, and you should be left with a semi-clear liquid that looks a little something like this. Now, the final thing to do is to add your zinc oxide. I'm going to sift my powder into my oil mixture, only because I've done this a few times and I find that if you sift it, it's a little smoother going on the body later. I'm using the back of a spoon to make sure that all of the big chunks get sifted. Once you've added the zinc oxide to your sunscreen base, go ahead and mix it until it's a whitish color and a creamy consistency. Finally, use a rubber spoon or spatula to scrape all of your mixture into a container. Once it's hardened, your sunscreen is ready to use and can be stored for up to six months. You can let your sunscreen mixture harden naturally, or you can put it in the refrigerator for 10 to 15 minutes. Congratulations, you've made your very own zero waste sunscreen. So choose your sunscreen wisely and stay safe out there.